enjoy the time that you're able to share with us as we worship the Lord this morning in spirit and in truth. Inside of a bulletin is a tear out tab, and I encourage everyone just to take a moment and tear that out with me. Guest on one side, there is a place for you to put down some basic information about yourself. Please take a moment, fill that out. You can place that in the offering plate later in the service. That would be a great gift to give to us. You can also give it to us as you leave today. We'll have people around uh, the doors and on the campus, and you can just give it to us. Uh, on the other side of that, there's a place for prayer requests and prayer concerns. Again, you can just fill that out, put it in the offering plate, hand it to one of us, and we will uh, pray along with you. We'll also add that to our Wednesday night list or our email list if you mark uh, as you would like us to do that. Well, there's a lot going on in the life of the church. I hope you have a bulletin. Be sure to look through that, read through that, make note of it. Uh, Pastor Rick will hit some of the highlights later on in the service, but you'll want to hold on to that as there's just a lot going on, a lot coming up that you'll want to be able to look back and refer on. We're very excited to worship the Lord today. I hope you are as well. At this time, I'll invite you to stand and greet those around you. Good morning. I want to thank you once again for joining us at Sharon Baptist, and I'll invite you to stand and join with us in singing. You're already standing, so that's good. Um, <laughs> and join with us in singing hymn number 26, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the 
desert place Gonna walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name remain standing and join with us in singing beautiful one.
scripture and prayer. Good morning, Sharon Baptist Church. Uh, every time I get up here, I feel the spirit. I don't know why, but I do. But it just comes all over you. So I'm going to get into this reading. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to them again in a parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like the king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those he had invited to the banquet and told them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent more servants and said, tell those who have been invited, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted calf have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid him no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. Let us pray. Almighty God, I pray to you that you forgive me of my sins, that you hear this prayer. That nothing will be between your ear and my voice that you will not hear. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for their their kindness, and most of all, I thank you for their support in making me a better Christian. And Father, may all feel your spirit as you feel me when I get up here. Father, that spirit is, un, is unbelievable, it's all-powerful, and it makes me want to do the best I can. And Father, I thank you for that. And all this I pray in your blessed Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
At this time, let's stand and give thanks to God for the blessings we've received. We'll sing hymn 668, the doxology. Hymn number 149, Praise Him, Praise Him. We'll sing all three verses. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him. Ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Please, our Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is come. Over the world victorious, power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Hymn 151, Bless His Holy Name. We'll sing all three verses. Christ is Lord. 
In 143, you are my all in all. We'll sing both verses. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all Jesus Lamb of God worthy is your name Jesus Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, bless your name, you are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up, when I am dry, you fill my cup, you are my Chorus again, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb. We'll come forward and we'll have our time together. <clears throat> yeah. Good morning. Good to see you all. Good morning. It's good to see you all. All right. You all like to have parties? Anybody ever have a birthday party? A lot of you have. You like, you like having parties? Yeah, good. They're fun, aren't they? When you have, you don't like them? Okay. <laughs> when you have a party, you usually invite your friends and some of your family and all the people that you want to come. What if you had a party? And you'd send out all these invitations and nobody showed up. That'd be, that would be sad, wouldn't it? You'd be angry, okay. Well, Jesus told the story of a man who had a party for his son. It was a wedding party, but it was still a party. <clears throat> and he had invited all these people. And when the time came for the celebration, 
They didn't show up. He even sent people to remind them, hey, it's time to come to the party. They still didn't come. And so what he did was he sent his servants out and he said, you go out and you invite anybody you can find. Invite everyone to come. And so people came in who never expected to be invited to the party, but they all came and had, uh, were able to be a part of that important celebration. <clears throat> Jesus told this story so we would remember that his invitation to come and to know him and to be a part of his kingdom, his invitation is for all who will come. And sometimes those that we think would be the first ones to be there are the last to respond. But he invites all to come and to share. So he loves each one of us. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that your invitation is for all of us. Thank you that you love each one of these children, each one of us that have come today to worship. Lord, we thank you for your grace in Jesus. It's available to everyone who will trust in you. <clears throat> we pray your blessing today on these children, on their families, and on all of us as we come to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys.
Thank you, choir. <clears throat> we'll continue reading this morning where Charlie left off. I'll let you stop, Charlie, before it got really ugly here. <clears throat> As Charlie left off, they had uh, made light of the invitation and uh, gone about their business, but some were worse than that. Beginning in verse 6 of Matthew chapter 22, <clears throat> Jesus continues, And the rest seized his servants, <clears throat> treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding." So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. It's a strange story to us. A number of quirky elements that are foreign to us. <clears throat> Some would argue that it's really two parables rather than one, but I like to look at them this morning uh, first of all, in their context, and then how they can speak to us today. The wedding feast was one of the most significant social occasions in Jewish life. <clears throat> Particularly for the poor common folk, perhaps it would be the only extravagant event they would ever experience. It was not an event of a few hours one afternoon or evening, but would last up to a week as the family and the community celebrated the wedding that was to occur. <clears throat> In smaller villages, it might involve the whole community as they gathered for celebration. Now, if it was a wealthy family, of course, the poor were not allowed in, but they were sometimes allowed to gather around the outside and look in, hoping to catch glimpses of the celebration inside. In Jesus' parable, the wedding feast is given by a king. <clears throat> now, we've recently heard of some snubbing invitations to the White House. For the king had much more authority and much more power than our president would ever have, <clears throat> and he could have someone thrown into prison or even put to death for a personal insult such as this. <clears throat> so the image of someone casually dismissing an invitation from the king would be shocking to those who have first heard this story. <clears throat> first of all, that someone would not be thrilled to attend something that was put on by the king, but also because of the consequences that might follow. It's even more bizarre to imagine that someone would murder the servants that the king had sent just for bringing an invitation. Yet, that is precisely what Israel had done to those whom God had sent to them over the generations. Jesus lamented over Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones 
those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you are not willing. But the rejection of those who should have filled the banquet had made way for the invitation to be extended to others. Others who never would have expected to be admitted at all. <clears throat> now, immediately... For those who were gathered to hear Jesus that day, this applied to the rejection of the scribes and the Pharisees, those who had devoted their lives to studying God's Word, those who should have been the first to recognize and to celebrate the coming of the long-awaited Messiah. Yet they were so steeped in their own traditions and their own expectations that they were not open to recognize how God was moving in their very midst. However, the common people, the poor, the outsiders were coming in droves, eager to hear Jesus' message of the kingdom. But this would be further fulfilled in the Jews as a whole rejecting Jesus <clears throat> and the extension of the invitation to the Gentiles. The second part of the story, or the second parable as some would have it, involves the, the king coming into the celebration to find that one of the guests had not come appropriately dressed for the occasion. That always bothered me. Envisioning the poor coming to the feast, I always wondered how the king could expect them to have the fancy attire that the original guests would have had. If I invite a homeless man to a formal event, I could hardly expect him to own or even rent a tuxedo for the occasion. But as I've studied this, apparently the picture is not so much of one who was unable to meet the requirements as it is one of someone who showed disrespect for the occasion and for the host by not wearing his best. Indeed, some have even suggested that as the guests entered the palace of the king, there would have been wedding garments provided for them so that they could then enter into the feast. <clears throat> and so because this man showed disregard, disrespect for his host and for the event. He was cast out. But what does all this mean to us? Yes, God's first invitation was to the Jews, his chosen people. But from the very beginning, the election of the Jews was intended to be a way to reach the world. To Abraham, the patriarch of the Jews, God said, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Paul tells in the book of Romans how the rejection of the Jews made way for the inclusion of the Gentiles. He used the illustration of a wild branch being grafted into a cultivated tree. 
when Cornelius, a Gentile, trusted in Christ and his family with him, and Peter saw the power of God present in that moment. Peter said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Second Peter 3 9 declares that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The banquet, the kingdom, is open to all who will come. But we must remember that we do not set the terms of our coming. The king asked the guest who had, shown, who had not shown regard for his invitation, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? Imagine if you invited me to a dinner at your home. You prepared the meal. You had the table set. Maybe you spent some time straightening things up a little bit. You had everything ready for my arrival. And I show up in my dirty, stinky mowing shoes. They're still kind of green. Got grass clippings all over my clothes. Green from about here down from the weed eater. Smells so good. Hadn't taken time to bathe or to change my clothes. Well, I was mowing the yard and I stopped just in time to come and join you for dinner. Would you feel that I had respected your invitation? Would it seem to you that that your gracious opening of your home meant something to me if I showed up with such disregard. I'm not sure why we think we can set the terms by which we come to the Lord. Perhaps we think he wants us so desperately to come to him that he'll take us however he can get us. Years ago, a man by the name of Wilbur Rees wrote, I don't know if it's a poem or exactly what it is, but it's called Three Dollars Worth of God. I would like to buy three dollars worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a warm cup of milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of God to make me love a black man or pick beets with a migrant. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want the warmth of the womb, not a new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I'd like to buy three dollars worth of God, please. I'm not exactly sure what commodity Rees had in mind as he wrote that. I relate to back when I first started driving, we always bought three dollars worth of gas. It's barely a gallon today. We seldom bought more than two or three dollars worth at a time. It was not enough to really sustain the car for very long, but it would do for a while. Why is it that we think we can carve out a little section of our life for God and hold the rest for ourselves. 
Jesus never made any such invitation. If anyone desires to come after me, he said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All are invited, but he sets the terms. And the terms are complete surrender. Herein lies the significance of Jesus' statement. For many are called, but few are chosen. All are invited, but few will accept the terms of the invitation. The man was not cast out of the banquet randomly at the whim of the host. He was cast out because he had come in an unacceptable manner, failing to respect his host. We cannot come to Christ and say, well, I'll follow you, but... Jesus said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And we know Jesus didn't call us to hate anyone. He called us to love one another, to love our neighbor, even to love our enemy. But our devotion to him should be such that by comparison, our love for anyone or anything else should seem like hatred, even our own lives. There's nowhere in Scripture a call to follow Christ casually. <clears throat> we can choose not to follow, but we cannot choose to follow Him casually. If we will follow wholeheartedly, if we will trust him and love him with all our heart, our soul, our mind, then we are welcome at his table. But there is no seat at the table for one who takes lightly his call. To follow me. So how will we respond to his call? If we are lukewarm, he says, I will spew you out of my mouth. It's harsh. But he says, I'd rather you be hot or cold. And not lukewarm. We have a royal invitation. But how will we respond? Will we ignore the invitation? Will we try to experience its benefits without respecting its terms? Or will we come with our whole heart? welcomed by our host. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Father, as we come this morning,
we live in a society of such convenience and such comfort. And somehow it's just natural for us to approach our faith with the same casual attitude. As we approach so much of life. The call to take up our cross. To deny ourselves. And to follow. Is no casual invitation. Help us, Lord, to to hear the terms of your call. To understand the cost of following you. And then help us to come. To trust you with all of our lives, with all of our being. And to follow wherever you would lead us. And so let us experience the joy of your presence and of your kingdom. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we come this morning to our time of response. Each one of us has the opportunity to respond as the Spirit of God moves in our life. If there's someone with us today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that today you would hear his invitation and you would respond. It's not a casual call. He wants you to take time and count the cost to understand what he is asking. But he also wants you to come to experience life as we can know only in Him. Those of us who are Christians, with time we tend to get comfortable even in our walk with Christ. We need to hear that call again. If God's moving in your life this morning, I pray that you'll respond as He leads you. Whether it's right where you stand or you need to come to the altar and pray or there's something you would share with me or one of the other pastors. As God moves in your life, you respond as he leads you and as we sing together. Our invitation for this morning is in 415, Room at the Cross. Let's stand and sing together.
Um, <laughs> we'll go one more verse. Let's go to verse three. The hand of my Savior is strong, and the love of my Savior is long. Through sunshine or rain, through loss or in gain, the blood flows from Calvary to cleanse every stain. seated for just a moment. My apologies. See, we still had room for five, <laughs> not just one. Uh, if the Langtons will come forward, we'll present them to you this morning. Took them a little bit to get out and back in, and we almost closed uh, before they got back. But uh, Royal and Molly Langton have been worshiping with us for some time now. Molly sung in our choir some, and and uh, these precious little ones have been a part of uh, Awana as well as our Sunday school and things like that. So it's, <laughs> it's a joy to be able to present them this morning as they come to uh, unite with our church and membership. If you rejoice in their coming, would you let it known by saying amen? Amen. 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 Great to have you all come. I'll be uh, meeting with them and uh, following up, but it's, it's a joy to have them come. You all have a seat. And we'll call you up in just a moment, uh, not to embarrass you, but give folks a chance to greet you after the service. <clears throat> this evening we have a special opportunity. Our church has uh, uh, elected Doug Pullen as a, a deacon, and we will have a service of ordination this evening at 6. Our ordination council will meet at 4, so we invite all uh, ordained folks, whether that be as a deacon or a minister, uh, if you're ordained, we invite you to join us at 4 o'clock. We'll meet in the prayer meeting room for that time. Uh, we'll have a time of uh, council, uh, of ordination council there, and our ordination service will be here in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock this evening. So join us for that. Uh, I think Rick has some other things to share. I do. Amen. Uh, and then also following the ordination service, we'll be having a reception for Doug and his family down in the adult seven area of our church and then lots of information please make sure i'm going to kind of hit some of the high points for um uh events going on but keep a, uh, your bulletin handy if you have some more details with that but this wednesday uh, there will be a, a medic blood drive here in the ministry center and that begins at three o'clock so that's three to eight a little bit different time starting this time so 3 p.m to 8 p.m if you want to come and help with that also, next Sunday, does anybody know what that is? Say it real loud, somebody. The Harvest Festival is next Sunday, and we'll be having that from 4 to 6, but we do need your help. We're going to try to do a few more games this year and some prizes for those games. So if we have games and prizes to hand out, we need people to volunteer hand out those prizes and, and just interact with those kids that will be coming. So if you're willing to do that, there is a sign-up sheet out in the hallway on the table to help during that fall festival time. Also, we're doing things a little different. By At 5 o'clock, we're going to begin with the trunk or treat portion of the Harvest Festival so people will be able to kind of do both, go back and forth if they need to. So we need even more trunks for the children to go and get their candy from. So if you're willing to do that, there is also a sign-up sheet for that out there. I will be contacting you this week to give you some more details of what time to show up and where to park and that sort of thing. But it'll be a great time. You will just absolutely love it and just being able to love on 
the children that will be coming through and also their families. Uh, we'll be sending some information home with children from uh, Copper Ridge and also from Bricky McLeod too. So you know what that means? A potential of having lots more kids and that's what we want and their families so that we can minister to them, have, help them have a great time. Upwards coming up, we also need some more volunteers for that, some coaches, some referees. If you're willing to do that and help out in that area, please contact me and uh, we'll get you pointed in the right direction with that. Coming up in two weeks, November the 4th, from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., there will be a women's ministry brunch. And that will be taking place down in the ministry center. The guest speaker for that will be Benita Wilson. And so if you're interested in coming and planning on coming, please do us a favor and contact the church office and let us know that you are coming. And then also yesterday we had a barbecue fundraiser to help for different for our men's and women's ministries, conferences, and that sort of thing. But if you ordered the barbecue and were, were unable to be here yesterday, then please you can go when we're done here, go down to the foyer of the ministry center. You can pay and pick up. Uh, your order down there, so please do that. And then if you're a first-time guest, once again, we're glad that you are here. If we have not given you a gift or you'd like to speak to one of our pastors, then you, we will be, one of us will be out those doors and just down the hallway there. Please stop and say hello to us. We will love to get to know you a little bit more. And then there are uh, many different prayer concerns going on with people in our church. Uh, we have Angela Wilson is uh, still at Fort Sanders. Uh, Betty Mantooth, remember Larry Baker, Mary Rhodes, Ronnie Wells, Shirley Smith, uh, Jerry Rimmer will be going to Vanderbilt this week. And then the following people had deaths in their families or some close friends of theirs, uh, Marlena Haithcock, Edna Hires, Dolly Luxinger, and Agnes Reeves as well. So if you will continue to remember those in your prayers this week and also for our church, pray for each other. We've got so many different things coming up that we'll be able to impact our community for the kingdom and to help each other to grow in their walk with the Lord too. Uh, so just keep each other in your prayers. So if you will please join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for being a wonderful, mighty God. A God that created the universe but still cares for us. And even with our sin, you still love us. You still sent your son to die on the cross for us. That we may be made right in your eyes. If we accept your gift of salvation. God, I pray you be with these prayer concerns that we just mentioned. You know what's going on in their hearts and lives. And I pray that you will show up in a mighty way and let them know that you are there and still in control. And Lord, I pray that you will be with different ministries that are going on and events that are coming up. I pray that you will speak to our hearts and help us to get involved and to be part of what you are doing to reach your community, this community for your kingdom. And God, help us as we go from this place. Help us to take what we've heard through your word, through your songs, through your message, Take it with us as we go from these doors to a world that so desperately needs to hear you and not to be ashamed of your gospel, but going out and proclaiming your salvation and your love. And in it, we'll give you the praise and glory. And it's in Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. We'll close this morning with the chorus of hymn 149. Praise Him, praise Him. Let's stand and sing our benediction together. Praise Him, praise Him. Tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him. Ever in joy.